Chester. Chris. So powerful in my mind. So it's things like that that we've talked about design. I think that's something that, that I get really excited about. Which I should say why. And anyway, we talk a lot about ideas. And with us, a lot of what we do is starting with that big idea. Like how can I, based upon this site, this client, this program, how can I come up with an idea that's going to really talk about the specific project? This is what we have an inspiration board that's in our office, a big board that we basically pull articles out of magazines and pictures and just begin to talk about qualities of space. Process is another big part of it. So we spend a lot of time sketching. And sketching about, believe it or not, this is in Marsh Landing, which is perfect because it's, it just talks about a lot of different ideas that you know, Marsh Landing needs to have more of but doesn't have enough of. And anyway, qualities of space, materials, and then how do we take all those ideas and develop it and refine it and bring it into later, into later project. Materiality and tactility, also extremely important. You know, just the way different materials interact. We're talking about, you know, the way smooth stones feel when you walk across them. Is it cold? Is it a machine feel something much colder? In transparency, translucency, which for me, those are ideas where particularly we can talk about architecture and its seductive qualities. Details and tectonics. This is just an image I've had in my workstation for a long time, but I think it's absolutely beautiful just in the way it's crafted, the way things come together. And from kind of more of a, of a macro scale, you get down to where this little slider works and how something comes into it. And I think it's just beautiful. So those ideas somehow kind of get into my mind and transfer into architecture. This is our office, which is downtown. We basically gutted this first floor. And how, when you take a lot of things apart, you get ideas about how you can put it back together. And ideas of you know creating provocative space. And I think, for me, space that questions. And when people come in, they say, why did you do that? Why is this like that? And that's what we try to do in our office here. This is a concept for a space that we did for this information technology space, which was interesting because this is just beginning to talk about how you organize space. But in particular, you see where these departments meet. They wanted to have different ways of thinking, more collaborative space. We call them attractors, kind of areas where people can get together and start to talk about things, kind of what we're doing, new ideas and then new things that might come out of it. This is kind of the final rendition of that, which is, you'll see kind of a very non-traditional looking space. It has a lot of glass, but it's a lot of interesting spaces where people can walk through and run into someone from a different apartment and start to talk about things that they've never talked about before. Ideas of expressing, this is a concrete column right here, and this is binary code. Things that talk about the type of space and the nature of the space. This was the competition entry that we did for a skyscraper in Beijing. We didn't win, but it was a great exercise. I think a lot of what we see in Beijing, from what we saw, is very sort of very over the top, very overly expressive, but not anchored in the Chinese and the Beijing culture, which is what we started with here. And on the next slide, you see we focus a lot of our practice on sustainability because I think it's important. We need to do that. And so a lot of these ideas are talking about different ways of situating the building, using systems um, to begin to make it more uh, more sustainable. The site was actually just to the east of the uh, the Olympic Village and north of the uh, of the main Imperial Palace. And just different ideas here. Hospice facilities, and thinking about this, I think one of the things we start with, you know, the average stay in a hospice facility is three days. So how do you begin to create space that's, that's that talks about humanity where you can celebrate life and something that is just very contemplative and non-institutional? And that's what we try to do in terms of colors, detailing. This is a, an urban project here in Jacksonville, which is a large welcome educational facility. And again, how can we begin to tie a context together that's 11 city blocks, has a lot of brick, but begin to re-energize it with kind of a new aesthetic, some new materials, and a new way of putting things together. They can talk about just what's to come and get you excited about it. This is the main model that we started with. This is a site model. And you can see there's a big curve facade on the one side. Begin to, how can we begin to create civic space and spaces where people can gather? It's energized by pedestrian bridges that are connected. Transparency. Interior spaces that lead out to the outside and vice versa. So, as you can see, a lot of ideas we were thinking about earlier, we try to embody and embed into this, these other projects. This is a concept for a contemporary church that we're doing here in Jacksonville. And again, very simple, quick sketches up here that begin to develop as you actually overlay it onto the site. Thinking there's a transparent piece on the left, there's a main worship experience, and how these other spaces begin to interact with that. And this is something that gets developed many, many, many times. 
to get to something like this, which is more refined, but again, it's just a study of how can we create some interest, create a transparent experience that really gets people excited about the church, draws people in, and then begins to talk about people on the inside, outside, to really get a sense of, man, there's a lot going on here. This is pretty cool. That's someplace I want to go. So from there, then once you go to the inside, you know, we're talking about authentic experience. They are very much in terms of creating just a simple, almost industrial container, and then putting spaces inside. So it's really about the experience itself, not about trim and, and stuff and all these other things that have nothing to do with creating an authentic experience. These are just images that help help them understand. And this is a concept for we did for the Pentagon Memorial, which again we didn't win, but it was a great exercise. The main concept comes from this piece up here, which is the thought was well maybe. We take the uh, seating plan of the actual plane that went down, and then we overlay that on the trajectory, which you're going to see on this next on this next slide. It's where it actually entered the Pentagon. The pieces that you see in dark there are actually the pieces where if someone was sitting on the plane, that's where they got it. So the idea is when people come in, you can start to this healing process. Well, oh, so your your son died, well, mine died too, or just just begin to talk about it, so that when you talk about it, there's other things that can help you move on. Like a box of life here, there's a reflecting pond, and a large monument that just help you to refocus. It's always changing. This is a media center that we did for, for um, the school. And again, I think it's important that we take risks on our work, because to me, it's just important that architecture tells a lot about what we're doing and the way things move ahead. So this is something in a typical brick campus that we did and said, we need to do something different to spark and energize the campus, to get kids excited about learning. And this is my daughter Jillian's work, which is she's four, <laughs> and I love her to death. But what I like about this is, you know, she's not an architect, but the thing is, she's influenced by architecture all the time, as we all are. And I think it's just really cool that design. I agree with everybody here is extremely important, and it's important that we support it, and there's value in it. So that's what I'm selling. <laughs>